Hello everyone, welcome back to the Backyard Foundry. We're going to be using the foundry we created in the first video, and we're going to melt some lead and aluminum today. You can see here we just added some lead to the crucible. The fire is lit, the lid on top to hold in the heat. There's only some uh, lead left on the towel there. So, you can see I'm using charcoal. Alright, now look, look here. The lead is not melted yet, but here is our setup. We have a hair dryer, tools there, some copper there, the uh, cupcake tins I'm using for the uh, ingot molds. Alright, now we can see that the fire is picking up, the sparks flying out, you can see the glow underneath. The lead is not starting to melt yet. See a little bit on top there anyway. So, now the lead is starting to melt. The fire is really spread around, but it's much hotter, so here it goes. We're adding the last piece of lead that will now fit in. And we start to see a little puddle there before I add this in. The lead, this is now full of lead I've had. That's all the lead I have. I'll it down into the small end of the tray. So, alright. So, lead melts around 800 degrees, which is about regular fire temperature, so you can actually probably melt lead in your grill, which is not recommend because it's kind of poisonous, but that's just letting you know how hot it has to be for lead. So now we can see that the lead is definitely starting to melt. This one is now like falling into the pool. You can see the puddle of the lead as the little piece falls in. It looks kind of oily on top, it's because when the light hits it, it uh, reflects strangely on the lead, so it looks like we can see oil on the ground. Now I shouldn't be really stirring this because you can see it's growing this film on top. That is oxidized lead, so it kind of wastes a little bit there by stirring it and mixing the oxygen into the top. So when if you're gonna do this, don't stir it. Just make sure that you don't mix enough like air in there to cause this brown oxidized lead on top. But now we've removed the air pipe and turned it off. So now we're gonna remove the crucible with tongs and then we're gonna pour it with a vice grip. It's important to remove the air pipe because if you turn, just turn it off, it'll act like a chimney, the heat will go up into your hair dryer, and it'll melt the inside. It almost happened to mine. You can see it on top of the stump there. Alright, I'm gonna grab my vice grips, grip the sides of the crucible evenly. And it's a lot heavier than if I do in aluminum because lead is a much heavier metal, so I have to be really careful here. I should have been wearing gloves here because it's, it, the heat radiates off the crucible a lot, so it's a lot hotter. Then it might look, but the crucible is around 800 degrees as well. So you pour in the lead here. It actually pours like water. You'll see with aluminum, it pours differently. I'll, like, I'll remind you to look at that when I pour the aluminum later. But you can definitely see the oxidized lead on top and the, uh, the uh, lead flowing from underneath. So we don't have to worry about that being in the ingots. All right, we're about done pouring. Okay, start pouring. Go. And they are now poured. I'm gonna pour some water, just uh, dump some hose water on there, cool it off quicker. That just helps uh, speed up the process. Alright, this is just out of our outside tap. Don't have to be any special about that water. Alright, so I'm just gonna take the Good. pan and yeah. just hit it on the ground. Just knocks down all the ingots. You can see they're nice little donut shapes. Wouldn't recommend eating this. Yep, little donuts. And the little pieces of flakes that fell off when I. Uh, poured it and I missed the bucket, the uh, hole a little bit. Then I'll just go in the uh, metal bucket as well, so don't have to worry about those. But we got a decent amount of light out of that. It's nice and little compact ingots ready for another project if we need them. Stack them up, a little grassy, but that's okay. So make sure we get it all because it's and not stop. good for the ground. Now it's very important that we scrape out the uh, crucible here. That on the ground was the outside. So we put the crucible back into the coals. It's nice that the coals stayed upright like that, leaving the hole in the middle, because I wouldn't like to push them out of the way. So I'm just going to add some charcoal back in, re uh, refueling it. And it's important to be up at the top, because if the metal's at the top, it won't be as hot at the bottom. It'll cause a problem. So you want to make sure the, the uh, charcoal's all the way up, and this will take much less time to heat up again, because all those white coals down there are already on fire. So this fire will definitely spread much quicker throughout. Alright, see it's much hotter. I'm dropping in one aluminum ingot that I made previously, but I'm going to add some cans now. So that will make the puddle at the bottom and the cans will be able to melt into that easier. And we're just going to put the cans in. And I wanted to make some smaller ingots. We'll use the same tray because I'm getting a smaller crucible for my Mark 1 Forge. 
and I'll be using that. So I just want to make some smaller ingots so I can do it like that. You can see the aluminum has finally melted. I did add one more ingot to it, so we have a decent amount to show you. But the fire is definitely very hot right now, probably around uh, 1300 degrees because it's 1200 to melt aluminum. So I assume at least highest about 1500 degrees. So very hot. You can see we're going to pull out the air pipe again shortly. I'm going to stir it up a bit. Yep, the uh, ingot has not melted yet, so we're going to wait for the air pipe. So, I should be definitely using a metal stick, not a wood stick, because now I'm dropping all the coals from the wood stick into the, the uh, metal there. It's causing a bunch of impurities, but that is my mistake. So, I have a pole that I can use made of metal. So, we can see that the stick is catching on fire, that's very hot. And. The metal is melted with all the impurities floating on top because the metal is much denser than the impurities. So we don't really have to worry about that until we pour. But everything's alright with this aluminum. I've noticed that this forge does not get as hot as my other one because the air has to spread out a lot more in this one. This one. The older foundry got, I think, I'd say 500 degrees hotter than this one because it did melt my steel crucible. This is a graphite crucible so it won't melt. But we also see the crucible is getting red hot, so it is definitely getting a lot hotter than it was with the lead, because the lead one, when the lead was in the crucible, it was not red hot. So we remove the air pipe, so it doesn't burn our, our hair dryer. So we're going to pull it out. See, I'm pulling it out faster because it's not as heavy, and it's definitely got a nice glow to it. I'm sitting on a flower pot because I don't want to be level, so I don't tip it over on the ground. Grab with our vice grips again. Come back over to the ink tray. So as you can see here, when we pour it, it actually like hangs off like hair from the thing. So it flows through almost like an aluminum tube as it uh, cools on the outside and the aluminum flows through the stream. The lead poured like water. I'm not sure why it's different. You can see we're getting a decent amount of ingots here. It's really, it's actually burning the grass underneath. But here I tip it a bit too much and I dump all the impurities into that ingot. So that one's a bit dirty, but that's okay. Now we're just going to do the same thing with the water. Mm -hmm. This is going to steam a lot more because the ingots are a lot hotter still. When I got the first foundry, there was snow around, so that was a lot more convenient to cool the uh, ingots, but I just got the faucet here again to cool them off. If you watch the first ingot here, it starts to bounce right now. See it bounce? That's because the water got under the ingot and then it steamed, causing it to just pop up. So all the ones actually do that, they loosen them up so I don't have to hit them as far on the ground. But we can see the impurities. It's basically just aluminum mixed with the uh, charcoal ash and stick ash that I put in there. So it's not pure, but the six here that are pure and half the one that is also pure. So that's decently pure aluminum that I made out of poles from the tent and aluminum cans. Water. We'll dump out these ingots. So I wanted to thank everyone for watching. Please subscribe and leave a